Twenty One Jump Street is one of my favorite, just like dumb comedies. I, I could watch these two goofballs be dumb and uh, say goofy things all day. Uh, I watched this for like the third or fourth time uh, <laughs> for this, but I watched this a week ago, finished it, and went. I haven't seen the sequel, and then immediately watched the sequel. I did a 21, 22 Jump Street double feature. It was a lovely time. Uh, today, I'm just talking about 21 Jump Street. I'll talk about 22 Jump Street uh, next week, or uh, while I record this, immediately after recording this one. Uh, but anyways, uh, this movie's got goofy characters who say and do goofy things, and I'm excited to talk about how I think they would do on Survivor. Let's get into it. We've got just four totally normal high school students. Nothing to see here. They're all high schoolers. Uh, let's start with Schmidt. Schmidt is not actually a high school student. He is an undercover police officer. Uh, not the best police officer. He's kind of a, a goofy dum-dum. Him and Jengo team up and kind of form like a brains brawn friendship as they both try to be... Uh, successful cops um, and in 21 Jump Street he seems like Schmidt seems like the the goofy awkward one and uh, ends up being like beloved by like the kids of the school everyone that he has to get in with he does they all like and respect him he can relate to them uh, he's nice and goes along to get along throws a party uh, fights performs Peter Pan takes drugs he does it all um, I think this this movie, uh, if we take him from the start, I'd be like, he's this is the first dude, he's pretty much, he's too awkward. Um, but if enough of things go Schmidt's way, my man could win. This is a sole survivor. He could, he could hang with the best of them, and he has uh, some cop skills. So I have him as a sole survivor. Cops do well in Survivor, and um, the fact that he could hang with the younger crowd bodes well, I think. Next up is Jenko, uh, the lovable himbo. I love this character so much. I, 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 I finished both the movies last weekend, and I keep watching clips specifically of him. Uh, <laughs> he's just so funny. Uh, he's big. He's athletic. He's not the smartest guy, and he is out of touch with the, what's cool. But he was once cool in his youth. Um, if we were talking about young Jenko, I'd have him as a merge boot. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of ego, despite the athleticism, or I guess uh, because of the athleticism. He was a cool guy. Now he's a, a dumb cop, just trying to get things done. Uh, I think he's lovable. However, in 21 Jump Street, I don't think he has winner upside. I think he's got post-merge upside. He, he'd be a threat. He'd maybe get a few lines as go and maybe find an idol in a few challenges, but he'd get taken out. I do love him, though. He's my favorite character from both of these movies, probably. Next up is Molly. Uh, Molly, unfortunately, dates a grown man. <laughs> they do say that she's 18 in this movie, but hearing that still made me uncomfortable. I'm like, he's grown. She should not be dating these high school kids. Uh, she seems like a cool person. If you, if you come off as a normal person to me, you're usually making post-merge. I have her making post-merge. She seems chill. I don't think she has enough, like, ambition from what I remember. Like, there's nothing... Like, I don't remember hearing what she wants to do. I just remember being like, she seems chill. So, I don't have her as a sole survivor. Uh, if I felt like she was, like, uh, you know, out there on her college grind or something, I could bump her up. But I feel like post-merge is fine. Uh... Yeah, moving on. Eric. Eric could have been Soul Survivor, because the, there's part of me that's like, he was running some mad schemes. He, my man was selling drugs on these streets and uh, getting into Berkeley, but uh, I find him a little snobby. I think, uh, I think pretentious is a strange word, because it's, you know, you come off like uh, annoying or snob for liking something, but there's a certain way to hold yourself and i think if you're stuck on an island with this guy for 39 days or 26 days you'd be a little annoyed by him probably not too far into it maybe a week or two into the game um there was potential but i missed the merge boot uh yeah he he could be post merge but um 
Maybe it's Dave Franco's voice. Uh, it just reminds me of Taylor from uh, season 33 of US Survivor Millennials vs. Gen X, uh, who has the most merge boot energy of anyone. I don't even know. I don't even remember who's the merge boot. He might have been the second boot of the merge. I think he was. Either way. <laughs> We've got an adult, Captain Dixon, Mr. Walters, and Mr. Gordon. There are other adults in this movie, but I'm not going to talk about them. Just wrapping it up with these three. Captain Dixon's up first. He is so funny and so pissed off, and I love both of those things about him. Uh, he's angry. He's making me crack up. He's roasting these dummies, and I like it. Uh, he's He's a successful lawman i don't actually know what his title is uh but he's running an he's running an, an operation so he's a smart guy he seems like he's in good shape um but he's mad so i have him also as the merge boot uh he could probably be post merge honestly i just feel like you know if stuff doesn't go his way or if he's running a tribe I feel like as soon as he has to work with another tribe, they're they're gonna be annoyed by him. Or he's more likely he's gonna be annoyed by them. They're gonna want to vote him out. So I have those merge boot, but I love him. Uh, I'll talk so much more about him in the Twenty Two Jump Street one, probably. Mister Walters, uh, <laughs> this actor, I think his name is Rob Rob Briggle. Uh, everything he's in, I find him very funny. He just has very strange energy. Uh, and it's, he's like at his peak here. Uh, so funny in this role and the scenes we get with him. Um, he is making drugs, using Eric to sell them. He's real goofy and strange. I, I don't know what else to say. He's just funny and weird. Uh, he has a big ego and he does fail in the end. So it's like, you know, if he successfully, did, you know, if he got away... We could say Soul Survivor post merge, but probably not. His personality is just very bizarre. He's a merge boot too. <laughs> you can't be running schemes, getting caught, and then uh, acting like like that, Rob Riggle. You're out of here at the merge. And last but not least, it's Mr. Gordon. I think at one point I had him as a Soul Survivor as a joke. Um, but I remember the scene, I think it's early in the movie, where he's talking to the students about, like, one time he did drugs with some actor, and I'm like, get this guy out of here. <laughs> this guy's pretty much... What a, what a big goof. Uh, I love Chris Parnell. I love him in this movie. He's very silly, but I'm like, you can't be talking about that with the kids. It's not the worst adult in this movie in terms of things they say or do with people that they believe to be children. But I'm not going to get into all that. I've got him making the pre-merge. It does seem weird that he's the only pre-merger. Especially looking at the merge boot row. Our Bruggle could be a first boot, let's be honest. But first boots, merge boots, and, uh, you know, they've got similar energy. And also merge boots and Soul Survivor sometimes have similar energy. But anyways, uh, this movie is hilarious. Go watch it. It's on Hulu. And so is 22 Jump Street. Go watch them both. Have a double feature like I did. It's a good time. I'm wrapping it up here so I can immediately record 22 Jump Street. I almost burped and I'm sorry. Goodbye.